is the third part of the message guidelines on the choice of a marriage partner and christian courtship preached by brother gile akani for further inquiry or counsel contact the discipleship department peace house p.o box 971 boko benue state nigeria telephone 044-470-824 May God bless you as you listen Shall we pray together? Our Father and our God we are grateful to you for the way you've been guiding and leading us even as we continue these studies trying to find biblical guidelines for choosing a marriage partner and the biblical guidelines for the relationship thereafter. Our Father and our God want to pray that even today as we look on the specifics of how to know the specific person that you have arranged for your children, we want to pray that there will be light, there will be revelation, there will be illumination from your spirit. Thank you for hearing us. For we have prayed in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I want to thank God for the chance and the privilege he has given to us to continue this uh, series of studies. And by our last study, we ended on the fact that God must work both on you as a brother to bring the revelation of the sister to your heart and the same God must work on the sister before it can be a correct relationship. Now you will notice that from that it means that anyone that God has not worked upon and introduced to you even if he be a Christian it is not yet correct to rush at her. Now, if we cannot even rush at a Christian sister because she's a Christian, until God has worked on her and prepared and convinced her that she's the right person, and God had also spoken to you that, you know, I mean, spoken to the sister that you are the right person, you can see that there is no space even for you to contemplate a marriage with an unbeliever. I'll be looking at that as we go on now. But uh, the stage in which we have reached, I still want you to turn to Genesis chapter 2 and verse 23. Genesis 2 and verse 23. And Adam said, This is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. And Adam said, This is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. What we want to begin to study is how can we become so sure how can we become so clear and so specific as regards who the Lord has brought or whom the Lord has prepared for your life? Take note, he said this. And that's very interesting to me. He didn't say this. He was not, you know, flipping in between two or three girls and said this. No, he said this is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. Now you might say, well, he had no alternative because it was only uh, the woman they brought. Now that's not the issue I want to trace with you. What I want to trace with you is how could we become so definite as to be able to also say this is the bone of my bones and the flesh of my flesh. How can you be so definite as regards the person that God is bringing to your life? Now, in, in other words, how can we discern 
the specific person, the specific will of God as regards whether it is this brother or it is that sister. And we are so definite that yes, I'm not making a mistake, neither am I making a wrong choice, you know, in my life at this point. Now, let me lay this foundation as I go on to deal with this. Number one, we notice that it was God that did that work. And also it is God that brought them together. Which means it is God that will bring this revelation of the right person to your life and the revelation of the right sister or the right brother unto your life. Now, let's take some little examples while we are tracing uh, how to be sure, how to be specific in knowing the will of God right now. Now, before I return to take some examples, I'd like us to turn to the book of Romans chapter 12. Romans chapter 12. Romans chapter 12. And we'll read verse 1 and verse 2 uh, to lay a general foundation for becoming you know, so clear and so specific as regards what the will of God for your life would be in choosing a life partner. Romans 12, verse 1. I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Now, let's, and be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Now, looking at the passage we have read, we are going to try to read it from other versions uh, in case it will make some meaning much more to you. But before we do that, I want you to note that the Bible begins by saying, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Now, in improving what the perfect will of God for your life would be, the first thing is, you must come to a point of total surrender. A point where you have offered yourself, you have presented your body as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God. The will of God will not come to you uh, when you have not presented your life as a living sacrifice, uh, holy, when you are not dedicated unto the word of God, unto the purpose of God, you may never, never really get to know what the perfect will of God for your life is. Now, if you do not present yourself, your body as a living sacrifice, holy, the kind that God can accept. The issue is that you will have offered yourself to so many things and so many men. And the implication of that is that you will be confused because you'll be having allegiance to so many people in between you want to make a choice. So the first thing we say again, as I build on this, is that in order to know the specific person, the first thing to do is to present your body as a living sacrifice to God. To present yourself to God uh, as a sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto Him. Now, the second thing which is very, very critical, and I'm going to spend a little time on that verse 2. Let's try to check uh, verse 2 for me now. 
Now I want us to read um, Romans chapter 12 verse 2. Now good news says do not conform outwardly to the standards of this world but let God transform you inwardly by a complete change of your mind. Then you will be able to know the will of God what is good and is pleasing to him and is perfect. A living Bible, the old living Bible said, don't copy the behavior and customs of this world, but be a new and different person with a freshness in all you do and think. Then you will learn from your own experience how his ways will really satisfy you. Thank you for that. Now, Will you please read Philip's Modern English for us? Uh, Philip's Modern English. Yes, verse 2. Philip's Modern English. Let's listen to how Philip put it. You could read from verse 1. With eyes wide open to the mercies of God, I beg you, my brothers, as an act of intelligent worship, to give him your bodies, as a living sacrifice consecrated to him and acceptable to him don't let the world around you squeeze you into its own mold but let God remake you so that your whole attitude of mind is changed thus you will prove in practice that the will of God of God is good acceptable to him and perfect all right now we are discovering two things here that one of the things that obscures or hides the will of God from us is the way the world system the superficial customs of this world had already set our minds you will remember that while I was uh, dealing with you resting and committing your way to the Lord I said, it is possible that you have been holding some certain standards. You have been saying, my husband must be like this. He must be like this. My wife must not be too short. My wife must be a light complexion. I don't want someone that is too dark. I want someone that is presentable. Uh, I don't want someone that is too tall or too short. And all of those kind of standards that you may have set for yourself. Now, apart from that, there is the superficial tradition that our mind had been filled up with because of the world system and each time the will of God is about to be revealed to you these things be cloud your mind and discolor what God wants to give you and as a result you find yourself uh, unable to actually discern what the perfect will of God for your life is so in preparing to know so that you can be as definite as Adam said this is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh the first thing is that you need not to conform yourself to the standard of this world what the world recognizes as important what the world recognizes as great they are not the issues that must preoccupy your mind is that actually uh, be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God now the more you open up your heart to Jesus the more you allow his word to remake your mind to prepare your mind to change your taste and to change your focus so that your own mind your own thinking your own concept of life your own definitions in life tallies with what Jesus Christ thinks about you it becomes easy for you now to understand and to know very very definitely what the perfect will of God for your life is a man whose mind is set on the things of the world will find it difficult to know what the will of God is from stage to stage in his lifetime. Now, having said that, we will now go on and take some definite 
instructions about how to know the will of God uh, in marriage. Let me first of all begin by saying to you that there are certain persons that you don't even need to pray about whether they are the will of God for you or not. Who are those people that are marriable and those that are not marriable? Number one, the word of God is so clear about what the marriage actually is all about, which I discussed with you in the first aspect. I said, you are not entering to marriage because you are of peer pressure. You are entering to marriage because there is a purpose, there is a mandate that God has revealed to you and that God has brought you into that you cannot fulfill alone without a wife. So your marriage in the beginning actually is for a purpose. And the sister herself has been equipped by God to come and contribute unto your life for the fulfillment of that divine purpose. Now so you can see that a woman or a man who is not born again, who as at now is still serving the devil, because the Bible says, whosoever is committing sin is of the devil. Now, a child of the devil cannot be a correct partner for you as a child of God. So, the first thing we are noting, even before you start finding out whether you should pray or not, you don't ever need to consider an unbeliever for marriage at all. No matter how he appears, no matter how gentle he is, no matter how kind, how loving he appears to be, but he is an Egyptian. He is an Egyptian. He is not yet born again. He is not a child of the kingdom. He is not part of the family of God. Now, the devil is still his father. Except you are hoping to have the devil as your father-in-law. That's when you could contemplate wanting to get into marriage with such a person. If you remember 2 Corinthians chapter 6, uh, I must remind you now, 2 Corinthians chapter 6, and this is what he says. He says, Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship as righteousness with unrighteousness? And what as com I mean, what as uh, what communion as light with darkness? And what concord as Christ with Belial? Or what part as he that believeth with an infidel? And what agreement as the temple of God with idols? For you are the temple of the living God. As God has said, I will dwell in them. I will walk in them. And I will be their God and they shall be my people. Now, this is very clear enough. Be not unequally yoked together with an unbeliever. As a Christian, you have been born again. And you know the Lord has a will and has a plan for your life. The first thing is that that will of God must not be mortgaged, must not be buried, must not be destroyed in affection with an unbeliever. The Bible says, what uh, concord, what fellowship as righteousness with unrighteousness? For you to take an unbeliever